Hello, Dr. Ron Eagling coming to you from Daytona State College. And today we're going to talk about one of the great computer science uh, things to talk about, the hash function. So um, let's first look at what that actually is. So at, at its core, and this is going to seem really simple, a hash function is any function that can be used to take data that's in one format, one size, meaning one thing, and then transform it to a data of fixed size. Now, of course, the data of the fixed size may not be 100% representative of the original data, but I can take something and convert it into something else that's of a fixed size. And you think, well, you know, what's the big deal? You know, taking stuff and converting it to something that it's not, but is of a fixed size, what does that really do to, for me? I mean, why, why do I even care? And the reality is, is that it's an incredibly useful capability. So let's kind of take an example, an everyday example of something that you would be familiar with, a chest of drawers. So most people, except for complete slobs that throw all their clothes on the ground in a large pile, typically organize their clothes into a chest of drawers. You have a drawer for socks and a drawer for shorts and a drawer for shirts and you know so on and so on. So why is this, why do you do this? Well, because you want it, well, one, you want your room to look neat, but the other reason is it really does make it easy to find something. So if you're looking for that pair of red socks, you just go to your sock drawer and they're relatively easy to find because everything that's in that sock drawer is going to be a pair of socks. Um, it's not going to be containing a whole bunch of other stuff. So this entire concept can be applied in the field of computer science. And when you do this, it has a lot of tremendous capabilities. So let's look at what we can do. Now, the concept of a hash function takes this piece of data and converts it to another piece of data. And once I've got that ability, I can do things like cataloging. So what do we do with, with hash functions? Well, one, one application is the ability to look up data very rapidly. And essentially what you do is you take the data and you apply a hash function. And some data will actually end up having the same value at the end of the hash function of other pieces of data. And those are common. Those are commonalities between those data. They actually fit within that bucket. We call them buckets. If I was going to use the analogy of the chest of drawers, we could call them drawers, but we call them buckets. And that thing, that chest of drawers, is actually called a hash table. So if you're looking for something in a massive amount of records, if I have them organized in a hash table and I can then take what I'm looking for and run a hash function on it and say, oh, it fits inside of this bucket in the hash table, they're relatively easy to find. So that is one very good practical use of a hash function. Well, what else can you do with this? Well, suppose you want to find a duplicate. You've got something that you're throwing in, you've got some, a whole lot of data, and you want to find to see if there's any duplicates of that data. Well, if all your data is in a big pile, you essentially have to take that one piece of data and you have to compare it against all of them. Or maybe you want to know in that big pile, are there two things that are duplicated? Well, now I have to take every single one of those and compare it against every single other one. However, in the bucket, you only have to compare the items in the bucket. So it's much easier to do this with, um, much more efficient to do this with, with, with the concept of having hash functions and hash tables. Another one, which is really an interesting one, is the concept of password security. So I may build some sort of system, and in the system I have passwords. Well, you've created this password, and somewhere you might think, well, we're storing that password. Well, that, there's a real issue with storing a password. You shouldn't. Um, what you can do is you can run that password through a hash function, okay, and then that hash function then takes the results of the hash function, which is not the same as the password, and it stores it instead. Now when you log into the system, all I have to do is take the password that you entered, run it through the hash function, compare it against the, um, the version that you actually have in the um, stored, which is also a hashed version of that. And we called hashed as having been through a hash function, a hashed password. And if they match, then you are led into the system. So a lot of capabilities of this really simple concept of doing this. Now, 
where do we use this? Well, we also use this in cryptography, um, you know, just like those other ones. And cryptography is a field into itself. And I am not going to start going into all the details of what you can do with cryptography because there's entire classes on that. But just needless to say, I've covered some of the applications of hash functions, and there are plenty more. So you want to write a hash function. You want to look at a hash function. What should a hash function look like? First, it needs to be deterministic. Deterministic basically means if I give the input, which may in this case may be your password, the hash function should always give the same output. It shouldn't just all of a sudden arbitrarily make it something else. There no, should be no random numbers or something dealing with the time of day. It's, it's A goes in, B comes out, always. Uniform. This is a good thing to have, with, and, and you want it to be as uniform as possible. So let's say you've got a range of potential um, hashed values that you have there, and you have all range of large number of inputs. Well, you would like to have them be uniform. You wouldn't want to have 10 buckets and everything be in one bucket Okay, that you actually do. You want it to be uniform across all 10 buckets. That's the concept of the hash table, and you, that's what you would like to see. Very nice if it has a definable range. And these are properties that are goals. Not necessarily every fat hash function has a specifically definable range. But if you can define the range of outputs, it does make it much easier to use the hash function for different practical applications. And one of them which is very important is this concept of non-vertible, which again gets back to our concept of the hashed password. If you can take the hashed password and convert it back to the password, well, what's the point of actually having the hashed password in the first place? They shouldn't be able to go backwards. Now, of course, if it's a mathematical algorithm, theoretically, there's always a way to go backwards, but it's not going to be easy. So there's lots of examples of hash functions out there, and there's actually lots of contests in writing hash functions. They have a tremendous number of use, and what you should get from this is now really understand what we mean by the concept of a hash function, a hash table.